Today's lesson is on trigonometry. Take a minute to look over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. If we know certain combinations of side lengths and angle measures of a right triangle, we can use ratios to find other side lengths and angle measures. Any two right triangles that have a pair of congruent acute angles are similar by the angle-angle similarity postulate. Similar right triangles have equivalent ratios for their corresponding sides called trigonometric ratios or trig ratios. Let's take a look at the trig ratios. The sine of angle A is the length of the side opposite angle A to the length of the hypotenuse. Cosine of angle A is the length of the side adjacent to angle A to the length of the hypotenuse. And tangent of angle A is the ratio of the length of the side opposite angle A to the length of the side adjacent to angle A. We can abbreviate the trig ratios as sine of A equals the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of A equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent of A equals opposite over adjacent. When I learned about trig, I used the phrase some old horse came a hopping through our attic to help me remember the trig ratios. The some old horse tells me that sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Came a hopping reminds me that cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And through our attic reminds me that tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Some people like to use Sokotoa to help them. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent equals opposite over adjacent. In example one, we will write trig ratios. What are the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios for angle T? Let's start by marking angle T. Since we know sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, we know sine of angle T will equal the length of the side opposite angle T, which is 8, over the length of the hypotenuse, which is 17. Since cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, we know the cosine of angle T will equal the length of the side adjacent angle T, which is 15, over the length of the hypotenuse, which is 17. Since tangent equals opposite over adjacent, tangent of angle T will equal the length of the side opposite angle T, which is 8, over the length of the side adjacent angle T, which is 15. Pause the video and do you try number one. What are the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios for angle G? Let's start by marking angle G. Since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, sine of angle G will equal the length of the side opposite angle G, which is 15, over the length of the hypotenuse, which is 17. Since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, sine of angle G will equal the length of the side adjacent angle G, which is 8, over the length of the hypotenuse, which is 17. And since tangent equals opposite over adjacent, we know tangent of angle G will equal the length of the side opposite angle G, which is 15, over the length of the side adjacent angle G, which is 8. In example 2, we will use a trig ratio to find distance. In 1990, the Leaning Tower of Pisa was closed to the public due to safety concerns. The tower reopened in 2001 after a 10-year project to reduce its tilt from vertical. Engineers' efforts were successful and resulted in a tilt of 5 degrees reduced from 5.5 degrees. Suppose someone drops an object from the tower at a height of 150 feet. How far from the base of the tower will the object land? Round to the nearest tenth. Since we know one of the acute angles measure of our right triangle, and we know the side length adjacent to that angle is 150 feet, we can use a trig ratio to help us find the distance from the base of the tower, x. Since we're looking for the length of the side opposite, and we know the length of the side adjacent to our given angle, let's use tangent, since tangent equals opposite over adjacent. We'll substitute the measure of our angle in for theta, x in for o, and 150 in for a. Since in our trig ratio x is up high, we will multiply to find the value of x. Use the calculator to find the tangent of 5, 
by typing in the 5 button and then the tangent button, and then multiply that by 150. The value of x is approximately 13.1, which means our object will land about 13.1 feet from the base of the tower. Pause the video and do you try number 2. Find the value of w to the nearest tenth. In part a, w is the side opposite our given angle, and 17 is the length of the hypotenuse. Since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, let's use the sine ratio. Substitute 54 degrees in for theta, w in for the length of our opposite side, and 17 in for the length of our hypotenuse. Use the calculator to find the value of sine of 54, type in 54, then the sine button, then multiply by 17. W is approximately 13.8 units long. For part B, we know the length of the side opposite our given angle, and we know the length of the side adjacent to our given angle. Since tangent uses opposite over adjacent, we'll use our tangent ratio. Substitute 28 degrees in for theta, 1 in for the length of our opposite side, and w in for the length of our adjacent side. When the variable is down low or in the denominator, we switch places and divide. w is approximately 1.9 units long. In part c, we're looking for the length of the side adjacent to our given angle, and we know the length of the hypotenuse. Since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, let's use the cosine ratio. We'll substitute 33 in for theta, w in for the length of our adjacent side, and 4.5 in for the length of the hypotenuse. Since the variable is up high, we will multiply, and w is approximately equal to 3.8. For part D, it'll be helpful if we draw a picture. A section of Filbert Street in San Francisco rises at an angle of about 17 degrees. If you walk 150 feet up this section, what is your vertical rise? Since we are looking for the length of the side opposite our 17 degree angle, and we know the length of our hypotenuse, let's use a sine ratio. We will substitute 17 degrees in for theta, x in for the length of our opposite side, and 150 in for the length of the hypotenuse. Since x is in the numerator, we will multiply sine 17 times 150, and rounding to the nearest foot, our vertical rise is approximately 44 feet. If we know the sine, cosine, and tangent ratio for an angle, we can use the inverse to find the measures of the angle. In example three, we will use the inverses. What is the measure of angle x to the nearest degree? Since we know the length of the side opposite angle x, and we know the length of the hypotenuse, let's use our sine ratio. Since we're looking for the measure of the angle, we want to use the inverse. To find the measure of angle x, on your calculator, hit six divided by 10, hit the equal key, then the green second button, and the sine button. To the nearest degree, the measure of angle x is about 37 degrees. In part b, we know the length of the side adjacent angle x, and we know the length of the hypotenuse, so let's use the cosine ratio. Since we're looking for the measure of angle x, we will use the inverse of cosine. Now use your calculator to find the measure of angle x. Type in 15 divided by 20, hit the equals button, then the green second key and the cosine button. Rounded to the nearest degree, the measure of angle x is about 41 degrees. Pause the video and do you try number three. For part A, what is the measure of angle y to the nearest degree? Here's angle y we know the length of the side opposite angle y, and we know the length of the side adjacent to angle y, so let's use the tangent ratio. Since we're looking for the measure of an angle, we'll use the inverse of tangent. Use your calculator to type in 100 divided by 41, hit the equal button, 
the green second key and the tangent button. Rounded to the nearest degree, the measure of angle Y is approximately 68 degrees. For part B, suppose you know the lengths of all three sides of a right triangle. Does it matter which trigonometric ratio you use to find the measure of any of the three angles? Explain. No, it doesn't matter at all. As long as you identify the appropriate leg that is either opposite or adjacent to the angle measure you're looking for, you can use whichever ratio you want. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions about the lesson check, be sure to ask me in class. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale than where you were before we began the lesson?